Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Anna and I do makeup, skincare, and multi-generational family lifestyle vlogs on my channel. And for those of you who are returning, hey guys, what's going on? So today, as you can tell, the video has already got started, um, but I wanted, this is an extra video for this week. As you guys normally know, I normally post on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on my channel, but I threw in an extra one because today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And as we know, um, that he he himself is a, a is a very influential person in um, the African American culture. So I thought that I would give you guys some lesser known facts about Mr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, you know, some of them are some things that I didn't know, some things I actually did know so I don't know you might know some of them but I figured as you guys watch through this uh, makeup tutorial that I'm doing I'd just give you some facts about him and then at the end I'd go through and tell you guys the the inspiration behind this makeup look and what it all means and what it has to do with Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one Martin Luther King Jr.'s birth name was actually Michael not Martin. The civil rights leader was born Michael King Jr. on January 15, 1929. In 1934, however, his father, a pastor at Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church, traveled to Germany and became inspired by the Protestant Reformation leader Martin Luther. As a result, King Sr. changed his own name as well as that of his five-year-old son to Martin Luther King. Number two, King entered college at the age of 15. He was such a gifted student that he skipped grades 9 and 12 before enrolling in 1944 at Morehouse College, um, which was the alma mater of his father and maternal grandmother. Although he was the son, grandson, and great-grandson of Baptist ministers, King did not intend to follow the vocation until Morehouse President Benjamin E. Mays, a noted theologian, convinced him otherwise. King was ordained before graduating college with a degree in sociology. Number three, King received his doctorate in systematic theology. After earning a divinity degree from Pennsylvania's Crozar Theological Seminary, King attended graduate school at Boston University, where he received his PhD degree in 1955. The title of his dissertation was A Comparison of the Conceptions of God in the Thinking of Paul Tillich and Henry Nelson Wieman. Number four, King's I Have a Dream speech was not his first at the Lincoln Memorial. Six years before his iconic oration at the March on Washington, King was among the civil rights leaders who spoke in the shadow of the great emancipator during the prayer pilgrimage in, excuse me, during the prayer pilgrimage for freedom on May 17, 1957. Before a crowd estimated at between 15,000 and 30,000, King delivered his first national address on the topic of voting rights. His speech in which he urged America to give us the ballot drew strong reviews and positioned him at the forefront of the civil rights leadership. Uh, number five, King was in prison nearly 30 times. According to the King Center, the civil rights leader went to jail 29 times. He was arrested for civil, he was arrested for acts of civil disobedience and on trumped up charges such as when he was jailed in Montgomery, Alabama in 1956 for driving 30 miles per hour in a 25 per hour mile zone. <laughs> Number six, King narrowly escaped an assassination attempt a decade before his death. On September 20th, 1958, King was in Harlem signing copies of his new book, Stride Toward Freedom, in Bloomston's department store when he was approached by Azola War Curry. The woman asked if he was Martin Luther King Jr. After he said yes, Curry said, I've been looking for you for five years, and she plunged a seven-inch letter opener into his chest. The tip of the blade came to rest alongside his aorta, and King underwent hours of delicate emergency surgery. Certain later told King that just one sneeze could have punctured the aorta and killed him. From his hospital bed where he convalesced for weeks, King issued a statement affirming for not affirming his nonviolent principles and saying he felt no ill will toward his mentally ill attacker. Number seven, 
King's last public speech foretold his death. King had come to Memphis in April 1968 to support the strike of the city's black garbage workers, and in a speech on the night before his assassination, he told an audience at Mason Temple Church, like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land, and I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Number eight, members of King's family did not believe James Earl Ray acted alone. Ray, a career criminal, pled guilty to King's assassination, but later recanted. King's son, Dexter, met publicly with Ray in 1997 and argued for the case to be reopened. King's widow, Coretta, believed the mafia and local, state, and federal government agencies were deeply involved in the murder. She praised the result of a 1999 civil trial in which a Memphis jury decided the assassination was the result of a conspiracy and that Ray was set up to take the blame. A U.S. Department of Justice investigation released in 2000 reported no evidence of a conspiracy. Number nine, King's mother was also slain by a bullet. On June 30, 1974, as 69-year-old Alberta Williams King played the organ at a Sunday service inside Ebenezer Baptist Church, Marcus Wayne Chenault Jr. rose from the front pew, drew two pistols, and began to fire shots. One of the bullets struck and killed King, who died steps where her son had preached nonviolence. The deranged gunman said that Christians were his enemy and that although he had received divine instructions to kill King's father, who was in the congregation, he killed King's mother instead because she was closer. The shooting also left a church deacon dead. Chenault received a death penalty sentence that was later changed to life imprisonment, in part due to the King family's opposition to capital punishment. And number 10, George Washington is the only other American to have had his birthday observed as a national holiday. In 1983, President Ronald Reagan signed a bill that created a federal holiday to honor King. The holiday first commemorated in 1986 is celebrated on the third Monday in January, close to the civil rights leader's January 15th birthday. The makeup look that I am doing today takes me back to the I Have a Dream speech. Uh, as you guys can see where I'm doing now, I'm actually creating this symbol for um, the, being a registered nurse. As all of you know, I will be starting nursing school in the fall, and um, that's a big thing for me. Makeup is also another thing that I am very passionate about. And so as I was thinking about Martin Luther King Jr. Day and the speech, I just was reflecting on all the things that I am able to do as an African American in this country these days. Um, there's a part in the speech where Martin Luther King Jr. states that um, he has a dream that his four little children will only date will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And that touches home a lot with the goals that I aspire, aspire to achieve in my life. Um, being African American, we get judged a lot just on the color of our skin. And Martin Luther King Jr. fought for equal rights for us, so I'm able to become a nurse or I'm able to pursue my passion for makeup and skincare hopefully without people judging me for the color of my skin but obviously for the content of my character looking back towards the beginning of this speech Martin Luther King states that uh, uh, let me just read it he says and so We've come here today to dramatize this shameful condition. In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a, a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That whole line right there is the whole reason that Martin Luther King Jr. was fighting for our, our freedom because 
our our nation was promised something that was to be given to everyone that unfortunately was not and still not to this day given to everyone but the fighting that he did give even though it is not you know 100 percent resolved and who knows if it ever will be um, i am now able like i said to pursue my dream to be a registered nurse to pursue my dreams through youtube to um to show my makeup to express my skincare to show share my family things that i might not have been able to do to this day if martin luther king jr hadn't fought you know tire tirelessly for the african-american freedom and i am just so grateful for that And when this happens, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something new and you understood my concept here. Uh, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.